So Excel can now run Python scripts using Anaconda. It's insane, okay? But I don't know Python, so what do I do? Well, I turn to my friend ChatGPT with a decent prompt to help me analyze my Excel data and help me learn Python along the way. Okay, so let's check this out. So in the beta channel of Excel, it's slowly rolling out. This button is slowly appearing on the beta version of Excel. Okay, so not everybody has it yet, um, but you can start inserting Python and I'll, I'll show you how in a second. But let me just show you sort of what I prepared earlier, just to give you a sense of what's possible. And I'm only learning this myself, so you know I'll come up with better use cases. But this data, I've turned it into this little data frame. So here's some Python code. Those of you who know it will be excited by that. Um, but then I can unpivot that table to the left. Look, this is an unpivot ta unpivoted table. Or check this out. You can even add heat maps like this using some sort of function like this in Python, okay? Which is pretty cool. So I'll show you how to do these two things using my prompt in a matter of minutes. I'm in GPT-4 and I've got the advanced data analysis turned on. This used to be called Code Interpreter. If you haven't got it on, you've got to go down to your settings in here and settings and beta, beta features and turn on advanced data analysis, okay? So it's on. I've actually found this works even if I don't have this on, but GPT-4 is way better than 3.5. GPT-4 costs 20 bucks a month. Okay, I've got my prompt. Check out Access Analytic on YouTube. Okay, so I'm just going to paste this prompt that I've got and send it. Now this prompt is me telling GPT-4 to imagine, and let me minimize this. I'm going to say, look, imagine that Python operates in Excel. Okay, so I'm telling it to work on that assumption. And I've told it what um, libraries are already loaded. And these are the libraries that are loaded in automatically. And I've told it I need it to do these sorts of things. Okay, always start with DF underscore and stuff like this. And it must put explanations inside the code to help me understand what's going on. So that's my prompt. Okay, so let's go and grab some data and ask it to help us. So. I need to unpivot the months into rows for data like this. You know, there's no real, you know, I could tell it I need to turn the columns into rows or it's gone, okay, there's this function called melt, right? Narrow this down a bit. Okay, and it's doing all this stuff for me. And I told it to add this commentary and I told it to do an explanation at the end. What I have noticed is it's actually hard-coded in the months, and I've actually given it instruction not to do that, so that's a bit weird, but let me just try this out. Okay, so don't hard-code month names. Send that. This is pretty cool. Okay, so it's right in the code for me and it's documenting it. Okay, let's copy the code and let's see how we put this in Excel. I'm just gonna to go to a, I'll go in the same sheet, I'll go over here. Okay, so I could go formulas, Python, insert Python, okay? However, that's a long-winded way of doing it every time. So I right click and add the button to my toolbar. So this is my Python button or Control, uh, Shift, Alt, and P. A lot, lot to remember. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on that button. And here I can paste my Python code. Let me open up my formula bar. And I've said in my prompt to always allow me to pick a range of cells. Okay, so I can click on that and I can go and select my data. There we go, done. And then Control, Enter, or click the tick. And let's see what happens. Okay, and it's returned. This is DF unpivoted. All right, because that's what I put in my prompt. I told it to spit out that name at the end there. Okay, and then I could just return that if I wanted to by again going here 
And if I type in df underscore, there's df unpivoted. Click on that, click the tick or control enter. And I could return this as an Excel value, control alt shift M, if you remember. Okay, but there we go, unpivoted data, sweet. All right, let's see if we can build a little uh, visual of this. So you're back in the code interpreter, or I keep calling it code interpreter, but GPT-4. And um, based on the above, I want a uh, heat map showing sales person sales by month. Okay, let's see what it does. Okay, so it's written some code for me. Uh, I already have a data frame called DF Unpivoted. Awesome, and give me the code in the comments for some alternative colors. All right, oh, I might have to try out Inferno. Let's see if it works first. So let's copy the code. Okay, copy code. Let's go into our report here. Wherever you refer to another data frame, it's gotta be below or to the right, that's in Excel. Um, or if you're doing it in different sheets, it's gotta to be to the, the sheet to the right, so it sort of flows in that order. Right, let's click the little button, uh, control V, click on the drop down. Okay, so it's saying DF unpivot suitable. Okay, here it goes. Uh, let's just give it a go. Click on the tick or press control enter. Okay, image, uh, right click. Right, if we come on here, we, we can actually click on this and say export the image. That's tiny, so right click, picture, create a reference. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go change that inferno color. I really wanna try that out. Here we go, where was the, was the actual color? Uh, that one there, and what did it say to call it? It said it was inferno. Okay, so uh, in the double quotes, inferno. Control enter. What does Inferno look like? Wow, okay, <laughs> all right. Anyway, I'm just starting to learn this stuff. These prompts are gonna be really useful. Find them in the YouTube channel um, description section of the video, and I'll catch you in the next video here.